My true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. Hey, neighbor. Happy Halloween. I mean, happy holidays. Huh, I know. It's been such a weird year. I can't believe it's already December 25th. What have you been up to? Hmm, not much. Laying low. Took the week off work. Oh my gosh, me too. My boss said that I have too much vacation that I had to use it or lose it, so I decided to take off all the 12 days of Christmas. Nice. You know, I think they should just ditch Christmas and have 12 days of Halloween. I prefer spooky. Better parties, for sure. Christmas, I can take it or leave it. What? Oh, Punch, you're such a Scrooge. Whatever. So. What are you doing on your time off? Mm, I don't know, PlayStation? Maybe cruise around on my bike if it isn't too rainy? Yeah, ha, huh, hey. So, speaking of bikes, you want to bomb down to Gasworks Park? I'm meeting George there. Nah, what are you guys doing at Gasworks? It's freezing. George and I are crazy about baseball, you know, on the PlayStation. We're really into it, and we got each other baseball gloves for Christmas. So we're gonna go down there and throw the ball around. You know, get outside, nature, fresh air. You should join us. Nah, I'm feeling tired. I haven't been sleeping well. Weird dreams. Really? I read that eating greasy foods can disturb your sleep and give you nightmares. Yeah? Well, maybe that's why. Do you remember my sister, Carol? She sent me a giant box of cheese curds for Christmas. I was eating them all day yesterday, and I still have half a box left. They're so squeaky and delicious, but maybe they're giving me nightmares. Wait, is that the sister who visited a couple of years ago? We ended up seeing that band where all the members were dressed like bananas. What were they playing? Kazoos? No, harmonicas, and one was dressed like an orange, remember? Yeah, that's right. The knock-knock jokes. Yeah, so I should tell you about this dream I had last night. So I was at that Burmese restaurant at the bottom of the hill. You know which one I'm talking about, right? Oh, yeah. I love their pork stew. I used to stop in there every week after water polo. Yeah, well, in my dream, I went in there and the place was packed. Every table was full of people and they were all chowing down. It was so warm and steamy. The only table that was free was that big one that they have in the middle of the room. So the waitress sat me down there. I order. He brings me a giant bowl of that pork stew. I'm about to start eating, and in walks this pig. The pig looks around. He sees me. He starts running towards me, 1980s professional wrestling style. He goes all macho man Randy Savage and does a flying elbow drop onto my table. The soup spills. The table breaks. Everything goes everywhere. And I look down, and I realize at that moment that what I do next will determine the fate of Christmas for everyone in the world forever. No way. Holy cow. What happened? Well, I woke up. You definitely need to lay off the cheese curds, Jasper. So I have to go meet George. But if we are both on vacation, we should skate over to the zoo. Hey, one question. The pig in your dream? Was he wearing anything? Yeah, he was actually wearing a Santa hat. Wow. Weird. Okay, so next time I see you, remind me to tell you about the pig I ran into last night. Wait, in a dream? No, in real life, Jasper. Wait, was the pig wearing a Santa hat? <laughs> <clears throat> On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me 
two baseball gloves and a partridge in a pear tree. Hey, Punch. Neighbor, how is baseball? Ugh, freezing. We went to the beer garden after, but we couldn't warm up. And then we were like, wait, what are we doing out here? We could be sitting in our cozy apartment, playing baseball on PlayStation and drinking eggnog. Yeah, he had a good point. Hey, you know, speaking of cozy, thanks for dropping off the fish soup. It was really good. Glad you liked it. George makes it every Christmas. It's a tradition. He grew up in Ballard, so, you know. Yeah. Which reminds me, I wanted to tell you about that weird pig. So on Christmas Eve, we were making the fish stew, and the entire afternoon, Syntax was acting super weird. He kept trying to get into the garbage, which was funny because we were saying bad Syntax. But anyway, at some point, we're eating dinner, and Syntax runs through the room, some type of weird thing in his mouth, probably a crab claw. He hides under the bed. We go in there. I'm trying to get him out, find whatever he had. I tell George, I'm just going to go and take the garbage out to the dumpster. So I walk to the back, put it in, come back, open the door, and Syntax has been waiting for me. The minute I open, he's gone. I mean, I looked for him everywhere, but he had totally escaped. Then I have this idea that if Syntax loved those soup bones so much, I should get them out of the garbage, lure him home. I'm headed back there and I hear these noises, and what do I see but a pig going through the dumpster? Wait, 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 a pig going through the dumpster? Wearing, wearing a Santa hat? Yeah, and I see him grab the bag of trash, and I'm yelling at him, what the flip? That's our trash! What are you doing? But he jumps into his sports car, and they go squealing down the alley. Wait, they? Well, I couldn't see who was driving. Well, tickle me pink. I'm so sorry about syntax. I love that goofball. That is a really bizarre story. Can I help you look for him? Oh, well, syntax came back the next day. He was back before we went down to play baseball. Oh, wait. So everything is back to normal. I mean, except that there was a pig stealing garbage. Well, I wouldn't say that. Syntax made it very clear that from now on he'll come and go as he pleases. Wait, what? We just have to leave the window of the fire escape propped at night. Last night he took off after dinner, came home in the morning with a guilty look on his face, like he'd been out partying all night. What? How is that possible? You know, I keep my window propped as well for the cat. I wonder if they're partying together. I think there's a lot we don't know, Jasper. Tell me about it. Maybe Syntax was the one who came in and stole my cheese curds. Did I tell you that the half box of cheese curds went missing? Well, actually, that's not true. The box is still there, but it's empty. Syntax loves cheese. I wouldn't put it past him. But you're probably sleepwalking and eating them in your sleep. You're so addicted to weird foods. I don't know. Weird foods is the least of my concerns. Weird stuff is going on. I mean, what's up with that pig? First in my dream, then in real life? Yeah, I forgot to tell you the weirdest part of all. So the pig hops into his getaway car, and the car has Alaska license plates. One of those vanity plates. It says, Syntax. Syntax? Like your dog's name? No, sin tax. Like a tax on cigarettes and alcohol. You're telling me that a pig in a Santa hat stole your garbage, got into a car, sports car. George thinks from my description it's probably a mid-90s Corvette. And drove away? Yeah, well, was driven away. Something tells me we need to find that pig if we want to get my cheese curds back and save Christmas. Not sure it's worth saving, Jasper. What's not worth saving, the cheese curds or Christmas? Thank you.
<clears throat> On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three French hens, two baseball gloves, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> oh, wow. Syntax. Welcome to the party, my fine furry friend. You're not looking so bad yourself, Peter. So, you know that billy goat that lives over near Golden Gardens? Yeah? His left tonsil officially went missing this afternoon. <laughs> and while I was in the neighborhood, I also bagged the cough of the quarantined. Wow, Peter the Resourceful. Whatever. Did you meet up with Kashtanka? Yeah, he's on it. You think he's good for it? Oh, sure. I've lived next to him for ten years. He's a resourceful son of a gun. Let's play a prank on Jasper. Great idea. Like Ding Dong Ditch. Yeah, but Jasper never answers the door. Remember when we tried to trick or treat? We rang the doorbell like 50 times and he never answered. Yeah, he had his chance. <laughs> yeah, trick or treat, Jasper, you giant doofus. <laughs> it's always funny until somebody loses an eyeball. Right. You're a total creepster, and I love you, but stay away from my eyeballs, you furry maniac. I'm heading out to see if I can find that unicorn who supposedly hangs out near the pea patch in Georgetown. How are you going to get him to, you know? Urinate? Easy. Make him laugh so hard he pees. Works every time. Here, listen to this one. What do unicorns call their dad? Popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a dad joke in a dad joke. What do you call a unicorn that got the flu shot? An immunicorn. <laughs> <laughs> he will be peeing his pants in under five jokes for sure. So, you want a ride? I'm planning to drive over to West Seattle. What's there? Word on the street is they have a werewolf problem. So? Who cares? Bang of a werewolf. Oh, right. Yeah, let's go. Christmas stands no chance against the party animals. <laughs> <clears throat> On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me four falling curds, three French hens, two baseball gloves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Hey, neighbor. Hi, Punch. How's your week off? Oh, it's going pretty good. What are you up to today? George and I are headed out to paddleboard. Oh, cool. So I've got to tell you, the weirdness continues. More Santa pig sightings? No, but my pizza toppings got stolen. What? Yeah. So I cruised down to Green Lake to that new pizza truck because I wanted to try the bacon pickle pizza they have. Wait, how have I not heard about this place? What is it called? The yodeling pickle. They yodel your order. Nice. So I eat a slice right there and it's the most incredible pizza I've ever had. But then it starts to rain, so I hop on my bike. I get back and take a peek. It looks as good as ever, so I grab a second piece and I eat it while I take my bike around to the back and I set the pizza by my door. I come back maybe three minutes later and all the toppings are gone. I can see the indents in the cheese where the pickles and bacon used to be. They are gone. Whoa, first stolen cheese curds, now missing pizza toppings. It's like there's some mischievous yet benevolent elf out there looking after your cardiovascular health. I don't really think elves are involved. More like some type of demonic force attempting to destroy my faith in humanity. Maybe the new neighbor stole it. Maybe she doesn't like that you're eating pork. I think she's vegetarian. Oh, yeah. The new neighbor. I met her briefly when she moved in. What's her name? I forget, but I could see her stealing pizza toppings. Hmm. 
I was talking to Jazz the other day, and he suspects her of harboring illegal pets. He said there are all kinds of weird noises coming from her apartment. I feel bad for her. Living next to the landlord is the worst. Tell me about it. We've lived over him for 10 years, but I think Jazzy might be right about the new neighbor. She is definitely hiding something or someone. So we introduced ourselves. She said something about a mini pig. Well, that's what I heard. George thinks she said guinea pig. Anyway, she works in coffee. She gave George a bag of Yemeni's beans. You know what will help you stay in your weird Christmas spirit? Hmm? Eggnog. George made eggnog. Really? I didn't know you could make eggnog. Would that be good? Asks the guy who eats fried food all the time. It's good. It's really good. Like drinking an ice cream cone. I'll drop some off. We might have some gingerbread left over from his Aunt Carol from Cincinnati. Well, keep a close eye on that gingerbread. Make sure nobody steals it. Christmas, my true love gave to me five golden rings, four falling curds, three French hens, two baseball gloves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Jasper, George and I are going to skate over to the zoo. You should come with us. I'm not going anywhere. Why? More fried foods? Gone missing? Wait, are you pranking me, Punch? If you are pranking me, I will smite you. You are a sadistic, conniving, amoral, bloodthirsty degenerate. Hold it, Jasper. We've been neighbors for ten years. You know me. I'm all those things. But I didn't steal any of your greasy grossness. Deep down, you know this to be true. Tell me what happened. I biked over to the Central District yesterday because there's this new pop-up near Uncle Ike's. It's called the Veggie Donut. The owner, Johnny Onion, is a complete savant. He makes the world's best fried onion rings. Johnny gets the onions from his grandma in Walla Walla. They are sweet, tangy, juicy, crispy. They are golden rings of awesomeness, Punch. Oh my God. I don't. Get it. Well, okay, so I ate a couple of the onion rings in the parking lot, and I brought the rest of the box home with me. Wait, and they've gone missing? Yes. A cat? Maybe? I'm sorry for your loss, but you should forget about the missing onion rings and cruise over to the zoo with us. We can stop by Tempura Matsui on the way home. You love that place. You can get Japanese fried vegetables. Oh, Punch, there's an onion ring-shaped hole in my heart. That is called heartburn, and you wouldn't have so much of it if you didn't eat like a total bro. This is how you're spending your vacation, eating fried foods? I've got to get to the bottom of this. That weird pig, the disappearing foods. If we don't figure this out soon, my Santa pig dream will come true, and Christmas will be destroyed forever. Wait, I thought you said you woke up before you ruined Christmas. Oh, Punch. If only it were that easy. Christmas, my true love gave to me six geese crushing five golden rings, four falling curds, three French hens, two baseball gloves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Peter. Syntax, the old dog. Did Kashtanka get the golden rings? Indeed, but even more importantly, did you get the armpit hair of a virgin? 
Yeah, yeah. I went down to the canal and tickled a hippie. Good. Well, I drove the vet over to West Seattle to get the werewolf fang and the mermaid fin. As I was cruising along, there were all these city lights and people having bonfires on the beach, and I thought, you know, it's not all so bad, really. Yes, it is. Greedy capitalists, with their excess consumption and their artificially cheap goods, they are going down. We will destroy them and bring the world back to a darker, simpler time. Wow. You sound extra grumpy today. I just want to make sure Kashtanka is going to come through. He's going to come through. Don't worry about that. Huh. You really think we can pull this off? What? Destroy Christmas and replace it with Halloween? Easy. Kashtanka and I have done way crazier stuff than that in the past ten years. Christmas is on its way out anyway. You said it yourself. Yeah, there are just so many details. If Kashtanka doesn't get everything... Forget about it. Forget about Kashtanka. Kashtanka has got this. He won't let us down. You know it would improve your mood? Let's play a prank on Jasper. We could put lipstick marks on his windows. Mm. Well, well, or we could steal his recycling and fold it into origami insects. Mm. Or climb through his window dressed like a Sasquatch and stand over him while he sleeps. Yeah. Or bake him a cake shaped like a turnip and that tastes like turnip. And include a card that says neep, neep. Yeah. Okay then, forget Jasper. Let's hop in the vet and cruise over to the Prophet's party pad. That's more like it. Let's scram. Watch out, Wedgwood. Here we come. <coughs> On the seventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me seven toenail trimmings Six geese crocheting, five golden rings, four falling curds, three French hens, two baseball gloves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Hey, neighbor. Happy Halloween. I mean, Happy New Year. Wow, what is it with me this year? I'm stuck in a time warp. Well, Punch, that's probably because you still have your Halloween decorations up. Every time I see your window full of pumpkin lights, it ruins my 12 days of Christmas vibe. Prediction. You will still have that ridiculous Rudolph decoration in your window in April. No way. I always take it down on Epiphany. So, what did you do for New Year's Eve? Yeah, well... I've had a lot of time this week because I'm on vacation, so I trimmed my toenails, organized my sock drawer, researched fashion trends in mid-17th century Paris. Corsets? Lots of corsets. You have no idea. What about you and George? George made a house of cards. He got it up to four levels before it collapsed. Oh yeah, and we ordered pizza from the yodeling pickle. And? The bacon pickle pizza. Delicious. And we got it for free. Yeah, apparently, if they like your yodel style when you order, you get free pizza. No way! That's like a major loophole! Yeah. Wait, can you yodel? No, but George can. Hey, I need to tell you about what I saw last night. Only if you yodel it. Yeah, right, okay. So, anyway, I was out on the fire escape drinking that eggnog from George and, um, smoking. Wait! You were drinking alcohol and smoking pot? No way. Yeah, anyway, so I overhear Syntax and Peter the Great down by the dumpster talking all kinds of crazy and- Wait, Syntax? Yeah, your dog. And Ivan the Terrible? No, Peter the Great, you know the pig. At least that's what Syntax called him, but he wasn't wearing a Santa hat. No way. What were they plotting? They just wanted to play all these ridiculous pranks on me. It didn't really make any sense. And they were on some type of a super creepy treasure hunt, gathering armpit hair from a werewolf or something like that. In the end, they peeled out in their Corvette. I hope it wasn't parked in our spot. I so told Syntax not to park in our spot. That vehicle could be stolen. Yeah, well, I couldn't really understand much of their crazy babbling, but I think they're trying to destroy Christmas. Well, I'd hope so. It's the new year. Christmas is over. No, it's not. 
it ends on January 6th, you know, Epiphany, when the wise men meet up with baby Jesus and give him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. <laughs> you said myrrh. <laughs> Seriously, Punch? Hmm. Well, I don't know. By your own admission, you were not 100% sober, so anything is possible. That's what I'm worried about. I think the impossible has happened. I think Christmas is gone and it's never coming back. <coughs> On the Eighth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me eight mermaid sulking, seven toenail trimmings, six geese crocheting, five golden rings, four falling curves, three French hens, two baseball gloves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Hey, Punch, so I met the new neighbor, like, formally. Well, formally is not as interesting as biblically, but it's a start. Did she give you Yemeni's coffee? Uh, no. It wasn't exactly a friendly encounter. I introduced myself as her upstairs neighbor and then confronted her about Peter the Great. Hold up. You what? Wait, the pig? Peter the Great? Yeah. I told her I'd seen a pig coming out of her apartment wearing a Santa hat. What, you had? No, I was tricking her, you doofus. And she was like, are you implying that my former roommate is a pig? So I asked her, did he escape? And she was like, more like evicted. And I said, was his name Peter the Great? And she was just like, more like Peter the Slob. Wow, this is socially awkward. I don't really care anymore because her cute little piggy sabotaged my dream and stole your garbage, and now is plotting to kiss virgins, tickle unicorns, tempt werewolves, and destroy Christmas. Peter the Great needs to be stopped, but she was not interested. In fact, she said, and I quote, like you're the one to talk, your cat is a thug. Wait, what? What, what did she mean by that? I have no idea, because she literally shut the door in my face. Conversation over, Christmas over, what are we going to do? day of Christmas, my true love gave to me nine pills that are mood enhancing, eight mermaids sulking, seven toenail trimmings, six geese crocheting, five golden rings, four falling curves, three French hens, two baseball gloves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Wow, Syntax, Kashtanka came through. I told you he would. Fried pickles, squeaky cheese curds, fingernail clippings. What are we missing? Well, we're substituting a goblin scream for a troll bladder, and we have the squeak of the cheese and the snap of the pickle, as you mentioned, and the five onion rings should be an acceptable substitute for the five golden rings, and I stole the elf off the shelf. So I think we're all set. Wonderful, wonderful cackle, cackle. Wait, why are you saying cackle? Can you not actually cackle? Ha, huh. what kind of supervillain can't cackle? If we would have known, we would have never invited you in to be part of the party animals. I should change your name to Peter the Cackless. Whatever. So what are you thinking what I'm thinking? Hmm. We have all the ingredients we need for the Halloween witch's brew. Christmas is ours, and we will destroy it. And we'll replace it with the 12 days of Halloween, because Halloween is way more fun. Chuckle, chuckle. Wait, you also can't chuckle? 
Soon I will have the last laugh as I quaff the witch's brew and go down in history as the pig that destroyed Christmas. Well, let's do this thing. We just need Hashtanka. Christmas, my true love gave to me ten landlords weeping, nine pills that are mood enhancing, eight mermaids sulking, seven toenail trimmings, six geese crocheting, five golden rings, four falling cards, three French hens, two baseball gloves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Hello there, neighbor. Oh my god, hey Punch, what were the two of you cooking last night? I almost passed out from the stench. It's funny you should say that, Jasper, because I got a passive-aggressive text from Jazz that said, I'm cool with the midnight munchies when they don't smell like troll vomit. Troll vomit? Could that be the name of a heavy metal band? Or maybe a restaurant specializing in Swedish meatballs? Yeah. I mean, what were the two of you cooking? We weren't cooking anything. We got pizza from the yodeling pickle. But when I opened the window last night, I smelled it too. I would say it smelled less like troll vomit, more like unicorn urine. But what's the difference, really? So did you or Jazz go outside to investigate the source of the stink? Nah, nah. It was late. You were playing PlayStation. It seemed like too much effort. We just shut the window. Yeah. I shove popcorn up my nose to stop the stench. Although, talk about things that give you weird dreams. Man, anyway, this morning I decided to walk down to that place in Freelard, you know, the one with the bacon-wrapped cinnamon buns, and I could still smell something weird. Yeah, I actually, I checked it out this morning. Someone was cooking something back there, but it looked like at some point it exploded. There was black, gunky stuff sprayed all over by the dumpster. I wonder if it was the party animals. Our pets are up to no good. I wonder if it was part of their evil plan to destroy Christmas. Do plants need to smell like burning goblin hair and moldy elf cheese? Don't they usually? My true love gave to me eleven gripers griping, ten landlords weeping, nine pills that are mood enhancing, eight mermaids sulking. Wait, wait, wait! It didn't work? Kashtanka, why are you still singing about Christmas? It should be on the eleventh day of Halloween. Your true love gave to you eleven demon farts. How could it not have worked? We did it by the book. The squeak of a cheese, the antenna of an angry ant, the armpit hair of a virgin. I'm going to change my name to Peter the Disappointed. How is it possible? Maybe it's not too late. I have an idea. I hope it's a good one. It's very good.
what it means. The witch's brew didn't work. That's a tried and true recipe, Kashtanka, my man. Are you sure you had all the smurfing ingredients? Pretty smurfing, sure. Did you get the mermaid fin? Yep, nab that at Alki Beach. The left tonsil of a billy goat? Yep, got that at Golden Garden. The fingernail clippings? Jasper. What about the unicorn urine? Yep, pea patch in Georgetown. And the cough of the quarantine? Easy. Snap of a pickle? Pizza toppings, Jasper. Squeak? Of a cheese? Cheese curds, Jasper. Did you hear that our plan to destroy Christmas didn't smurfing work? Yeah, Kashtanka told me. How could we have failed? We are great supervillains. Remember when we trained the Seattle Seagulls to steal tourists' ice cream cones? It was pandemonium! Or the time we convinced the Fremont Troll to go on vacation and replaced him with a Sasquatch. Everyone agrees the Sasquatch was way cooler. Yeah, we made the national news. I remember everyone was disappointed when the Troll came back. Hey, gosh, Tonka, if you still have all the ingredients in the trunk of your Corvette, we could try it one more time. Epiphany isn't until tomorrow. It could still work. But first, let's have a smurfing snowball fight. I smurfing love snowball fights, but I wonder about those curds. <laughs> My true love gave to me twelve palmers humming, eleven gripers griping, ten landlords weeping, nine pills that are mood enhancing, eight mermaids sulking, seven toenail trimmings, six geese crocheting, five golden rings. Four falling curds, three French hens, two baseball gloves, and a partridge in a pear tree. And that is the story of how the party animals tried to destroy the 12 days of Christmas. Was I worried? Yeah. Did I put my life on the line to stop them and save Christmas? Well, not really. When it all went down and started stinking, I shoved popcorn up my nostrils and closed the window and went to bed. That's what real heroes do, actually. They play Grand Theft Auto and then they go to sleep. Remember that. Today, I ran into the new neighbor again. Still can't remember her name, but I wished her one final Merry Christmas. She was somewhat cool about it. She's not good at chit-chat like Punch, but she gave me a bag of Yemeni's coffee beans. That was neighborly. I told her about the yodeling pickle, and she said she'd check it out. When the neighbor opened her door to get the coffee, a rabbit hopped out. But I played it cool. I mean, what do I care if she's harboring illegal animals? She said she had no idea where the rabbit came from. I told her that she should probably name it Epiphany. She said she'd think about it. So, the witch's brew. I talked it out with Kashtanka, who fessed up to everything. The thieving, the bad smells, armpit hair. The witch's brew came very close to working. They had unicorn urine, the left tonsil of the billy goat, the werewolf fang, the snap of the pickle, and pretty much all of the other demonic ingredients. Well, all of them, except one. Yes, 
their evil recipe was incomplete. They had the cheese curd, but they didn't have it squeak. It was too old. We all know that cheese curds lose their squeak. If you are trying to do something dastardly, and it all hangs on a cheese curd, make sure it is fresh. Amateurs. Anyway, stay cool, stay squeaky, and until next year, wishing you a merry, merry Christmas. Thank <laughs> you.